Now that you know what the problem is when we use the actuator refresh, we are going to solve that problem by using Spring Cloud Bus. This is how the Spring Cloud Bus works. All our microservice applications will register themselves with the Cloud Bus as well. Along with the config server, they will be in touch with the Cloud Bus. The Cloud Bus will be in touch with the config server. And if a particular instance of a microservice updates the config server, by changing some configuration, we as developers change that configuration. If we simply refresh the config server through actuator slash bus refresh, instead of the refresh which happens at a application level, we'll do the bus refresh. When you do that, automatically the cloud bus will tell all the other microservices that a refresh has happened through a message broker. So the cloud bus and the microservice communication happens through a message broker. This message broker could be RabbitMQ, which is the default implementation. It could be Kafka and more. So the key here is we configure a message broker. We'll download it, install it, run it, which is very simple. Once you do that, you will configure the message broker and the cloud bus. You simply add the cloud bus dependency. You need not do any work there. Automatically, all the configuration will happen and then all the communication will happen for you magically. The key here is to understand that you go change certain configuration, for example, this property. You need not do multiple refreshes. Only if you refresh, use this bus refresh from microservice one. So you go back to Postman. Here, instead of actuator refresh, we do actuator slash bus hyphen refresh. That is the endpoint which we are going to hit. Once you do that, the cloud bus will know that the configuration changes have happened through the microservice one. When we hit that URL, the cloud bus knows that something has changed. The cloud bus will let all these microservices, the other instances of microservices that the configuration has changed through this message broker. It sends events, it fires events and these microservices will then automatically invoke or call into the config server to fetch the latest configuration. So earlier on, we had to refresh each microservice through the actuator slash refresh. But once we have the cloud bus, all that is automated for us, you hit the bus refresh. The bus through the message broker will let all the microservice instances about the update. Those microservices will automatically fetch the latest information from the config server. That is the concept of Spring Cloud Bus. So in the next few lectures, it will be downloading the message broker, which is RabbitMQ. It is very easy to run it. I will show you how to do that. Once you start the RabbitMQ server, it will uh, go to your product service. The first step is to add the cloud bus support. Here you see Spring Cloud Starter Bus AMQP. So that is the dependency that is required to communicate with the RabbitMQ messaging server. You can also use Kafka, etc. But RabbitMQ is the easiest and the default uh, implementation that is used. So add this dependency. That is the first step. Once you add that, all the Spring Cloud Bus magic happens automatically. Second, go to the property file, which is the bootstrap.properties, and you will be configuring the RabbitMQ information. The host, port number, the default port, username, and password. All these are the default values when you run the RabbitMQ server, automatically it will run on your machine. This is the default port and it uses a user called guest and the password is also guest.